it had come to this at last. One man, a poet and a rogue, with no friends to speak of, no one to mourn his passing, should it come to that. Even those beside him are no more boon companions than bond servants, summoned by sorcery and song, as cold and indifferent to him as the light of a wandering star. And not that long ago. A simple man he was, with a quick wit and a sharp tongue, an eye for the lasses, and a talent for keeping one step ahead of the law, come to Houghton to play his tunes and make his way. He found himself standing outside the Drunken Rat, a public house owned by the widow Mary McCrary. The bard readied his instrument and prepared to ply his trade. Drunken lots, get off your backsides and kill it. I'll save you, fair damsel. Ah, oh, what a strapping man you are to be saving me from that wee beastie. I happened to be wandering by when I heard your cries over the rumbling of my empty belly. You aren't hurt, are you? No, but aren't you the sweet one for asking? See? I've an idea. If you'd be willing to do a little job for me, I'd give you a good meal and a warm place to lay your head for the night. I'd be only too happy to handle anything you'd like to heave my way. Then it's a deal, for it's a wee rat problem I've got in me cellars, and if you could do away with them, I'd be ever so thankful. Rats, you say? In the cellar? How cliché of you, love. But I'll forgive you this once. You'll need a bigger sword than what you've got, in case you run into trouble. Oh, and, uh, my sword is quite big enough to handle any troubles you might have. <laughs> 